Good morning, everyone. Monday, it's that time of the week. It's the episode you guys always wait for. And uh, I want to thank everyone for the support with these videos. There's a lot of research that goes into finding out which coins sold for a bunch of money this past week. And as I focus traditionally on the post-1950 modern U.S. coins, that is exactly what comprises the Monday Market Report. And this particular one is for the week ending August 4th. Now, it's we're in the dead heat of summer, and if you think that the coin market has slowed any, you are wrong, guys. You are wrong. As a matter of fact, as we go through some of these inclusions on the list... You know, I begin to wonder, am I in the wrong business? Um, you know, there's like three or four or five coins on the list that um, th that probably transcend a lot of like normal thinking when it comes to buying some of these newer coins. The final coin on the list is, is no exception. That, that thing is bonker, bonkers in, in every sense of the word. So before I jump in to this week's Monday Market Report, as always, I got to do my YouTube thing and help promote the channel. Uh, if you haven't done so already and this is your first time here, welcome. And uh, feel free to hit the subscribe button. Uh, we got a little quick e easy access button right on screen on the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Uh, and also hit the bell for instant notifications. Uh, actually, it looks like uh, Sherlock Holmes with a big old tall hat uh, symbol right there. Uh, someone had pointed it out, and I'm like, man, that really does look like a detective uh, from 19th century England. So <laughs> it's kind of cool. Uh, but any in any event, uh, let's go ahead and get started with this absolutely insane list of coins. Um, I wanted to mention, <laughs> just as a side note, I'm going to be talking about 23 coins on this list, uh, all in which totals over... $84,400. Uh, do the math. Uh, you're looking at about $2,000 or higher uh, on average per coin. And, and then you begin to wonder, what, what are people buying out there? And why are they buying it? And that's why you're here. So we have one eBay coin that I wanted to talk about. And uh, this one is notable uh, because it's an Eisenhower dollar. For, you know, crazy, crazy, right? Uh, this one right here is a 1971S Eisenhower or Ike dollar, silver dollar. This is actually a 40% silver proof dollar. All right, this one right here is a PCGS graded proof 68 with deep cameo. Deep cameo simply means it has a nice frosty kind of whitish relief on the coin. And then you have the drippy, mirrory black fields, uh, highly reflective. But this coin, coin sold July 27th of 2019, uh, so this past week, for $10,500. Uh, so there's the first coin right there that people are buying. They're buying extremely high-grade Eisenhower dollars. Oh, take a mental note. Um, some of you are probably going to ask, how easy is it to attain this kind of grade? Well, it's not easy at all. Yeah, it's going to be the perfect storm of finding the right coin that doesn't have the the prerequisite, I guess, uh, milky white haze that are traditionally found on these coins as they come out of the holders. Uh, that seems to be a an issue that plagues some of these coins. Um, and furthermore, uh, you just don't see them quite this clean. And what most f folks do is they'll dip the coin to eliminate that haze and you know maybe submit it that way um it's a common practice uh, that's been going on for many many years but i wanted to go ahead and start it off and kick it off with uh this incredible incredible ike dollar so the next coin that we have on the list here is going to be uh coins uh, of course all the other coins are great collection sold items uh, for all of your, uh, you know, kind of like high-end or low-end coin needs, Great Collections is a fantastic auction hosting site. Um, uh, Ian Russell, uh, who's the president of that company, is fantastic. And, um, you know, this is truly a great option B uh, when it comes to selling your coins. Now, of course, some of these coins are going to be higher caliber much like this 1995 Lincoln Cent, which of course exhibits the marquee doubled die obverse variety. Uh, this is the coin that kicked it off back in the mid-90s. It was all over the news. Um, it was a big deal. 
this coin is a big deal because it is the highest graded coin possible. It's a PCGS Mint State 69 full red, and this one sold for $3,774.38. Pretty nice coin here. So the next one that we have up here for you is a 1968 Lincoln Cent. Uh, you know, traditionally known as one of the tougher decades for grading uh, Lincoln Cents uh, because it's tough to find any coin with um, either a really strong strike or clean planchets. Okay, and generally these coins will have a lot of nicks and various bag marks and things like that, uh, which prevents the coins from grading as high as this example did. So this one is a PCGS Mint State 67 Plus full red example that sold for, get this, $1968.75. A 1968 Lincoln cent that sold for $1968. Um, that's pretty uncanny kind of, you know, stuff right there. Sorry about that, my phone's going off. But anyways... Um, Pretty nice, pretty nice coin here. So we're going to go ahead and jump on to the Jefferson Nichols. We only had two Lincoln cents in there, kind of hard to believe. But the first one that you see here is um, a, a rarity, okay? 1971 proof Jefferson Nickel. This one, of course, is the highly coveted No S variety, okay? They're supposed to be an S mint mark because these were produced in San Francisco. This one does not have it. Uh, this one graded PCGS proof 68 deep cameo now this is what a coin looks like right out of the mint package as you can see it's got that milky white haze on there uh, which uh, is not toning and it's not as desirable on its face um, because of that milky white haze uh, even though it graded pretty nice uh, it only sold for two thousand fifty three dollars and twelve cents I've seen these coins sell and eclipse the three to four thousand dollar mark on a regular basis, but you know this coin right here with that haze um, is kind of a uh, a downer uh, to some of the most discerning collectors. So, anyways, pretty nice variety. Don't get me wrong. Uh, the next one that we have here is going to be a 1956 D Jefferson nickel. I've said it once and I'll say it again, uh, you know, and I say it usually in every video. So this is my one per video shot and coins of the 50s and 60s are hard to grade uh, with full steps. Okay, this one, no exception at all. Another tough date. This one is a PCGS Mint State 66 with full steps and this one sold for $1,244.25. Pretty nice coin. So the next one right here uh, is a testament that you don't need full steps for a coin to be absolutely just amazing and very valuable. This is a 1955 D over S over mint mark variety Jefferson nickel. Okay, it's a cherry picker's guide variety, one of the coins that a lot of people look for and try and cherry pick. And uh, if you find one in high enough grade, like this one, uh, this is a PCGS Mint State 66 plus. Um, the grade itself is not as hard as it sounds, okay? Uh, finding one in full steps is nearly impossible because this particular coin and date and variety um, is usually weak, weakly struck, okay? It's a little bit mushy and soft on the strike side. But this one sold for $4,331.25. There you go. If it's not full steps, find a variety in a nice grade. And they're usually cherry pickable, you know, at coin shows and shops and uh, even on eBay. Um, I come across them uh, pretty regularly. Uh, it just takes a little bit of time and energy and uh, you can find something that really, really looks nice. All right, so we have a, um, a quarter and uh, we have a ton of quarters. This Monday market report and especially great collections was deep, deep, deep with some pretty amazing Washington quarters. The first one here has been a coin that's always been on my cherry picking list. I've been unsuccessful. Um, it's a rare variety. It's a 1965 Washington Quarter. It's a doubled die obverse, which is also known as FS102 in the Cherry Picker's Guide. Uh, this one is a PCGS Mint State 65, and this one sold for $2,306.25. All right, this is a pretty nice coin right here. Uh, again, Finding one at this grade level with the variety, it's 
I'm not saying that's impossible, but it's going to be a great challenge for uh, would-be uh, hunters of such coins. So pretty nice one here. So the next coin that we have is going to be a 1963 Washington Quarter. Okay, this one is in an old school NGC slab, uh, an original holder uh, from I think the 80s. It's a Mint State 67. It's also CAC certified, so it's got the extra certification from a third party authentication company that uh, double checks the graders' numerical grades on there. Uh, this one has, um, you know, really de relatively decent toning to give it uh, some originality. It's not, it's not top of the heap toning, but it does have a little coloring on there. This one sold for one thousand one hundred eighty-two dollars and thirty-eight cents. Not too shabby. Um, we have another Washington Quarter. Uh, this one is a nineteen sixty-two D. Uh, this one is a high-grade example. Uh, one of the tougher dates to find as a mint state 67 this one is through pcgs and this one sold for one thousand seven hundred forty nine dollars and thirty eight cents pretty nice coin the 1962 philadelphia washington example washington quarter uh is even probably 10 times more tougher to find at a mint state 67 or higher this example right here is a mint state 67 example through pcgs and it's also a plus designation so it's got the extra half point kicker um this one has really nice toning i'm not gonna lie yeah i think the toning probably makes up 30 to 40 percent of the final hammer value of the coin in which it sold for fifteen thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars uh, do you know any other coin from the 1960s that sells for that kind of money? Okay, 1960s, uh, whether it's a silver or a clad, we don't traditionally uh, relate, you know, high value with these type of uh, dates. Uh, you know, it's just kind of unheard of, um, especially for someone that's new to, the, like, the grading aspect of coin collecting. So th this is a huge, huge coin right here. Coming up next, we have a 1961D washington quarter this one also another tough grade uh grades out pcgs mint state 67 uh, and this one brought home two thousand four hundred eighty four dollars um quite a few 1960s bombs in this uh particular monday report and uh they they come they kind of come in ebbs and flows uh you know a like a, a collection will, will come across the auction block uh you know like a registry set or whatever and uh that's why we're seeing some of these like clumped up you know decade type coins uh popping on the auction block and uh, that's why we have a string of 1960s coins here uh so we do have a 1959d as well this particular example is graded pcgs mid state 67 uh, and this one is also toned. Um, there are a few toned coins on the list that are not my particular favorite. Uh, this one is okay. It's not too bad. Uh, this one sold for $1,631.25. Whether the toning is ugly or attractive, you got to keep in mind the toning is what provides the originality of the coin. And that's why collectors and registry set people love coins like this is because they know they haven't been played with. Um, since they were minted okay it takes many years if not decades to form the kind of toning that you see on some of these examples so here's a tougher dated coin right here it's a 1955 d washington quarter this one however is an ngc graded mint state 67 uh, a little bit older slab as well uh, this one sold for 1183 dollars and 12 cents uh, pretty nice coin it's got a little bit of originality to it uh, aside from that, it's one of the tougher dates, um, especially in the Philadelphia version, uh, in which a coin of the same grade typically sells for about four to six times this amount of money. So a uh, pretty nice coin in an old NGC slapped holder. So we have a uh, 1954 Washington Quarter. This one is a PCGS graded Mint State 67 plus, a pretty stratospheric type grade. It's really high up there. Uh, it's also CAC backed. This one sold for $1,896.75 uh, through GC. Pretty nice. Uh, coming up next, we have a 1952 Washington Quarter. All right, so we have a couple more left here. This one is a PCGS Mint State 67 Plus. 
Also has some of that original um, uh, archival toning on there. Uh, not my favorite in the grand scheme of um, just eye appeal. Uh, but aside from that, th this little bit of toning on here gives it some credence of its originality. Okay, people don't like dipped or artificially doctored type coins. And this one is certainly really, really nice. This one sold for $1,378.12. Uh, the next coin that we have here, and it is the final coin of the Washington Quarter Series. It's the 1951. Uh, this one is tremendous. It's a PCGS graded Mint State 67 Plus. CAC backed, and it is also toned with some originality. This coin sold for $2,081.25. Um, I'm less and less surprised as the coins get older into the 50s. Uh, coins of this grade level sell for that kind of money seems to be par for the course uh you'd be hard pressed to find any that don't sell for this kind of money if that's so that's a heck of a rip um by any buyer uh that's for sure uh so we have a few um candy half dollars the first one is an absolute surprise and uh, it's a 1965 candy half dollar of course this is the 40 percent type of the coin uh this is a pcgs mint state 67 uh, it's got some uh, pretty decent yellow toning on there. It's the first, uh, I guess, color in the toning progression um, when these things convert over over time. Uh, this, in, this one is a former Sunset Collection piece. And this one sold for $4,262.62. Um, did you guys know that coins like this are worth this kind of money? Especially the 40% clad silver half dollars. Um, you find one in high enough grade, they're certainly worth that kind of money. So it's nice to see this example pop up on here. We have a few Franklin half dollars. Probably, you know, as far as popularity, they're the least favorite of my patrons. But I like to talk of, about a few of them. Uh, they are an obsolete design. So when you find one, you're like, oh, that's an old half dollar right there. But this one right here is the 1958 franklin half this one graded pcgs mint state 67 with full bell lines so it's got a really nice acceptable strike on the reverse uh this one is also cac backed and is also toned i don't like the toning at all on this one but again the toning gives it proof of originality uh, which is what you want to see because a coin is ugly to you or i you know it could very well be someone's crown jewel for their collection and because of that, this one sold for $1,495.12. Pretty cool coin right here. So the next uh, Franklin half dollar is going to be this 1957D. Uh, in much the same vein, the toning is not attractive to my eyes, but again, it gives originality to the coin. This one is a PCGS Mint State 67 with full bell lines. It is also CAC certified. And this one is one of the tougher dates to find in the Franklin Half Series with FBL. And this is a $4,893 sale. Uh, pretty nice coin, and it's a lot of money for a Franklin Half. Uh, but one in which it's worth all that money because of the, uh, the strike characteristics of the coin. So that's pretty nice there. And uh, finally, uh, the last Franklin Half dollar is this 1955 not typically known as being one of the toughest dates. Uh, you know, 1955 is notable for a lot of things. It's the most common date to find the Bugs Bunny variety, which is that die clash in front of uh, Ben Franklin's mouth. Okay. Uh, full bell lines. They do exist with full bell lines. Traditionally in lower grades, like 64, maybe a 65. This one right here is a Mint State 66 Plus. Uh, through PCGS and this one is also got some toning on there this one sold for two thousand forty seven dollars and fifty cents all right so that rounds out all the half dollars so we have three the last three coins on the list are probably some of the most eyebrow raising inclusions into the list this first one right here is a 2009 P and I've talked about a few of these as they were being sold the last few weeks about the first day of issue presidential dollar coins now the the thing that really drives the price of this uh, the actual numerical grade plays somewhat of a role but also the time in which these were graded 
so that way they receive the uh, some of the treatment by the graders. You're probably paying about 75% of the actual sold dollar value of these coins uh, as a result of the grading, okay? And it's less about the coin, okay? So keep that in mind. This one is the uh, 09 Philadelphia William Henry Harrison, all right? Uh, this one right here is the position A, and that simply refers to the edge lettering. Uh, in regards to other coins like it so there's a position a and a position b uh, so they did to kind of clear it up i guess this one is a first day of issue and that ladies and gentlemen is what drives the price of this coin is that particular line on the slab label first day of issue this one also has the henry harrison portrait label okay by the grader pcgs graded this one mint state 68 and this one sold for four $4,275. Um, the conversation ends there. It's like, what, I don't think it's worth that kind of money. Um, you're paying more for the provenance and actual plastic encapsulating the coin. Um, there's no other way to quite explain it. Uh, but there are collectors that go out of their way to find these coins because not a lot of them were ever submitted with the first day of issue notation on the label and i think that's that's what really drives the price on these so the this next coin right here is one that i've pitched and kind of promoted for years as being kind of like this under the radar type of coin that not a lot of people pay attention to and it's the 1976 bicentennial Eisenhower dollars, okay, and not just any one of them, okay, this particular one that you see on screen is the Denver minted coin of the same type, but this one is what they call the type 1 reverse, so you have two different types of reverses, a type 1 and a type 2, the type 1 reverse, um, the total mintage is about 25% of the total mintage, whereas the rest of the mintage is reserved for the type 2, and it's real simple, this one has the big old chunky fat letters on the reverse as opposed to the type 2 you have the more skinnier if i had to kind of compare they look like the uh, uh if you guys are familiar with type styles it looks like garamond um you know it's got the little serifs they don't flare out that that much but the letters are noticeably skinnier than on the type 1. now finding one in a really nice grade is tough it's going to be tough but these are coins that on their own Let's say if you found one in circulation or you found one out of a roll that came from the bank, but you know it's been circulated. Those coins I've sold for between $5 and $10 on its own. All right, but finding one at this level where it's a PCGS graded Mint State 67 means a lot, okay? And this one sold for $5,906.25. Yeah, that's pretty incredible. It's crazy. Um, and it just goes to show you that, you know, coins that are traditionally overlooked have a lot of selling power, all right, because of maybe one little nuance or something, you know, a different type of variety or uh, reverse. Maybe once for, one was intended for a proof strike. Things like that is what collectors look for. They look like to find different nuances and mess ups from the mint. This one is incredible okay and that's just proof proof to you that coins like this are being sought after in a wild way speaking of which wild way the last coin on the list okay this is where i'm saying man i'm in the wrong business maybe i i ought to you know kind of focus on you know doing stuff like this and finding coins like this and then trying to send them out but if only i had the opportunity and the actual resources to do such yeah this is a 2019 West Point, brand new. This is the West Point program that the U.S. Mint is producing as a circulation rarity. This one is the War in the Pacific Reverse, okay? As you guys know, PCGS has a bounty up of $2,000 on every subsequent, subsequent new release. And um, if your coin is sent to PCGS and it's one of the first few or the first one, they pay you this bounty. Furthermore, when they go to grade the coin, okay, they put in, they type in right on the label, first discovery. So how how much does that particular phrase on a coin mean? Well, 
In the case of this one right here, which is a PCGS Mint State 67 example, it's one of the higher ones. Uh, it's also known to be one of three. So they received three coins in the same day. So they all split the $2,000 prize in that case. This one sold for $6,018.75. You just can't get any more stupid than that. That's a lot of money. First discovery aside, I mean, this, ladies and gentlemen, these coins are worth a lot of money. Regardless if it's a first discovery. There, there are people that, that are saying, well, I, I don't know the viability of this program. Well, have you seen the first three releases of this program? In which raw coins were selling for 100 to $200 in the first seven days? This is real, okay? And the fact that a graded first discovery example sold for over six grand is pretty much the 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 way to close out this video. There's no other words to express this. And that, guys, concludes the Monday Market Report for the week ending August 4th. I can't believe it's August already, but hope you guys enjoyed this one. Would love to hear your comments. Uh, was there any one coin on this list of 23 that kind of stood out? You know that you want to address and talk about uh would love to hear your comments uh like share subscribe hit the bell for instant notifications or hit the sherlock gnomes uh, sherlock gnomes <laughs> never mind uh but anyways uh yeah it was a lot of fun hope you guys enjoyed it uh yeah stay tuned for more great videos i'm your host sean with blue ridge silver you guys have a wonderful day enjoy the hunt enjoy coin collecting